William Leon Flaps. How essential it is to be able to live inside a mind with attractive and interesting pictures on the walls. William Leon Phelps was nearing the end of a long and successful career as writer, critic, lecturer and for many years one of the year's most popular professors. He had helped guide the lives and destinies of countless young people who had come under his influence. Now he had been asked to write a message for the families of America, a message of guidance and inspiration for all people of every age and in every circumstances. In messages out of the wisdom and fulfillness, fullness of his own rich life to help them achieve happiness and contentment. Professor Phelps thought back over the years by far the best definition of happiness he had ever heard was in, the, in his senior year at college. He had never forgotten the eloquent address by President Timothy Dwight. He was so young and ambitious then and so uncertain. How eagerly he had listened to every word hoping to find in President Dwight's message some magic tale talishma, some simple basic ideal by which to live and by which to guide his future. And he had even now, a lifetime later, he could still see President Dwight as he had looked that day on the platform, could almost hear the timbre and the reflection of his voice. One sentence stood out about all others in the long address had burned itself indelibly on his memory the happiest person is the person who thinks the most interesting thought through all the years that followed that sentence had stayed with him helping to save his life and his ambitions helping to keep his sight and standard high it came to mean more and more as time went on and he more fully realized its significance it influenced his entire career as an educator and through him influenced the life patterns of many others Real happiness is not dependent on external things without without this moment. The pond is fed from within. The kind of happiness that stays with you is the happiness that springs from inward thoughts and emotions. You must think of this now. While you are young, you must cultivate your mind. If you wish to achieve enduring happiness, you must furnish your mind with interesting thoughts and ideas. For an empty mind grows bold and cannot endure itself. An empty mind seeks pleasure as a substitute for happiness. Professor Phelps thought again for the article he had been asked to write, a message of guidance and inspiration for the families of America. Looking back over the years, he could think of no better message than simple basic philosophy by which he himself had lived and which had served him so well. The philosophy so memorably expressed in that single sentence by Professor Dwight. The happiest person is the person who thinks the most interesting thought. He took up his pen and began to write, no matter what may be one's nationality, sex, age, philosophy or the religion, everyone wishes either to become or to remain happy. Hence, definition of happiness are interesting. One of the best was given in my senior year at college by President Timothy Dwight. The happiest person is the person who thinks the most interesting thought. This definition place happiness where it belongs within and not without. The principle of happiness sh happiness should be like the principle of virtue. It should not be dependent on things but be a part of personality. If the happiest person is the person who thinks the most interesting thought, we are bound to be happy as we advance in years. Because our mind have more and more interesting thought. A well-ordered life is like climbing a tower. The view halfway up is better than the view from the base and it steadily becomes finer as the horizon expands. Herein lies the real value of education. Advanced education may or not make men and women more efficient, but it en enriches personality, increases the wealth of mind and hence bring happiness. It is the finest insurance against old age, against the growth of physical disability, against the lack and loss of animal delights. No matter how many there may be in your family, no matter how many friends we have, we may have, we are in a certain sense forced to lead a lonely life. Because we have all the days of our existence to live with ourselves. How essential it is then you to acquire some intellectual or artistic taste. 
in order to furnish a mind to be able to leave inside a mind with attractive and trusting picture on the walls William Leon felt the philosophy of happiness was originally published as a magazine article later reprinted in his book happiness published by E. Data and company has been reprinted many times since in many forms it has become a classic on the art of happiness is one of the best known and most frequently quoted essay on the subject only a small part of it has been quoted here but this familiar excerpt give the gist of Phelps philosophy and and is generally considered to be one of the most interesting important parts of the essay biographers tell us that the influencer of professor Phelps personality on his student was greater even than the influence of his writings. That may have been true in his lifetime, but surely today his essay on happiness must be considered one of his most vital and far-reaching influences. For so, the beloved professor was still this matter continued to guide and inspire countless young men and women. It remains an enduring monument to great educators who believe that the more interesting life is the happier it is and that therefore the happiest people are those who cultivate their mind and think the most interesting thoughts. Learning is an ornament in prosperity, a refuge in adversity and a provision in old age. Ashtotu. The more a man finds a source of pleasure in himself, the happier he will be. The highest, most rare and lasting pleasure are those of the mind. They are never alone that are accompanied with the noble thought, Sir Philip said. When we cannot find contentment in ourselves, it is useless to seek it elsewhere. One calls that quality. What is without us has no connection with happiness, only so far as the preservation of our lives and health depends upon it. Happiness springs immediately from the mind. We most live who think most who feel the noblest and who act the best, Philip James Bailey.